Hello, good morning. We're going to be showing you how to use uh, Navisworks today. Uh, this is for Navisworks Manage, so the paid version. Um, the very first thing that we should probably take a look at is how your um, your windows are set up and manage. And so you'll just come over here to view. The very first thing we want to check is the load workspace. And when you first load up first time, you're probably get, going to get minimal. Um, so we just want to go ahead and load up the standard, and that's what I have here. And so that's going to give you all of your um, toolbars on the um, sides and the bottom. So the um, two most prominent toolbars we'll be using are going to be properties and um, selection tree. So you'll probably want to use the pin buttons here um, and just pin them so that they don't auto hide. Um, so the way that this is set up is we have um, the selection tree and when you first are in the home tab if you want to start um, adding in models you'll just hit a pin here. So um, Let's first review Navisworks. The point of it is that you uh, combine several 3D models into one. So for example, here we have um, Revit models coming in, AutoCAD models coming in. Um, you could even bring Inventor in, things like that. And just to give you a look at um, our options, we'll just hit the append button there. And these are all of the file types that we support, uh, that, that they support. So. Uh, most common ones you'll use are probably going to be um, the Autodesk D D DWG and you know, maybe the Revit or the NWC. And occasionally you'll link in NW NWDs. Um, we'll go over more of that later. Um, so let's just talk about basic operations. So you've, we've linked in some things here. Um, now we want to start looking at things in the model. Um, it's pretty similar to CAD where if you use your middle mouse wheel, you just hold the button down and you're able to pan. If you want to orbit, do shift, middle mouse button, hold it down, and we're able to orbit. You can see my pivot um, orb that's um, located, it was located right there. That is where we're pivoting around. If you don't like the pivot point, click on something and then pivot, and it will put the pivot point right there. Um, number one piece of advice is if, if you're panning or if you're orbiting, sorry, you always want to have um, one thing selected and um, It'll make navigation much easier. Same thing if you're zooming in. Um, you can see that it's it's acquiring my zoom points based off of wherever my cursor is at when I'm zooming. So, um, yeah, just for the orbit, just typically you're, you're going to want to have something selected. So right now we still have this selected. You can see that it's blue. That's how I know that. We can also see it on the bottom left there on our selection tree. And if we actually, you can see that it's opened up our selection tree all the way up here. And so, for example, this is the drawing name. And this is, these are all the layers the drawing has in it. So when I click on M and E, it's selecting everything that's on M and E. Um, however, if I select you know just just this, it's going to filter all the way down into a um, what's called a block in AutoCAD, and it's saying this is the boiler block. And so right now, if I select that, I'm I'm moving the entire boiler. Um, whereas if I just select a uh, 3D solid entity that makes up the block by clicking right here, I'm only selecting a portion of it. So that's how the selection tree works, and that is how um, we, we can make some selections. If you need to hide anything, you have two options. You can click on it, right click, and then hit hide. Um, it's probably best to do it in the selection tree though. So if I want to hide the whole boiler, let's, let's go ahead and select the entire boiler block and then go ahead and hide that. And um, to unhide that, we will just um, hit hide again. You're good to go. Um, additionally, you can um, hide this if, um, let's say, you start hiding a whole bunch of stuff. You need to revert, revert back to how it was. You can come up here to um, reset all. Actually, I take that back. Um, you can come to unhide all, and that will reset everything. Um, you want to avoid the use of unhide all as much as possible because you typically will have some things that are hidden in your model. Um, so it's best if you if you know kind of what you hid and and not hide that way. Um, so moving forward, if I want to know something about a, a entity on here, um, for example, these tanks, I can click on this tank here and my properties over here, I'll see um, some information about it. Now this came from Plant 3D and they have um, the BIM information from Plant 3D is actually, in my opinion, pretty poor compared to MEP. So we'll actually compare the two in just a moment here. But you can see here that I have the tag of the equipment. So this is the tag that I'll see both on my PID and my um, 3D model. Uh, and you can see it's a, a um, class tank. And if we had sized it, um, 
there is a size associated with this. I'm not sure why that's says un, un assigned, uh, und sorry, undefined size. So if we kind of come through here, you can see none of this is really, none of the other tabs here are really helping us much um, other than it tells us what layer it's on, what drawing it's on. Um, okay, so then let's actually compare that to then the some of this duct work um, from this is from AutoCAD MEP and let's you can see how much more information I have in AutoCAD MEP it's it's quite extensive this is this is good BIM information right here and we actually have the capability of, of in MEP actually adding um, uh, more custom fields to this so it can be pretty powerful pretty quickly and we could actually then start linking in data sheets um, depending on you know, if there's a piece of equipment or, or things like that so um, that's how we're going to so that's an overview of how you can use the selection tree and um, the properties. And we've uh, gone over how to orbit, how to pan. Um, now we'll just go over a few other things. So I can use my view cube in the top right here and I can get a top down view. Notice that it snapped to what I had selected, which was that, that duck. So if you have nothing selected and you do the top down view, it'll just do a zoom extents and it'll try to get everything into, into view here. Um, so now we have a top down view. You can see though that it's actually um, in a perspective view because I'm able to see the side of this despite being top down. So we can actually change it by coming over here to viewpoint, going from perspective to orthographic. And now we have a true top down view. You typically are going to want to work in the perspective. Um, we can do measuring. And to, to do that, we just come over to review tab and then we'll do measure. And if I want to measure from side to side here, Just do something like that. And it's also going to give you the X, Y, and Z. Um, unfortunately, you can see the X is the dotted here. You can see that my X axis is actually not positioned to the to this building right now. There's ways to get around that. We're not going to cover in that, that in this video today. But this can be really helpful. Um, Navisworks does try to auto-determine with the building, um, uh, sorry, with the X, Y, and Z axis should be based off our model. But since we have a site-wide model here, um, and all the buildings are different rotations. It, it's it, Navisworks was unable to determine what the um, X, Y, and Z axis should be. Um, so, but typically, it should work for you. Okay. So, moving on, um, we can also we also have the ability of selecting things and moving them temporarily. So, what we'll do here is it's best to um, come into the suction tree here, select something. And so this is selecting all of the m and &E's. So let's uh, m and &E layer. So let's say I only want to select my boiler. I'll come over here down to my boiler block. We'll go to item tools. See, this is a new tool um, tool ribbon that popped up. Before I, when I didn't have anything selected, that was not that was not there. And um, I don't think I mentioned this earlier. If you do make a selection and you no longer want it, just go ahead and hit escape, and it deselects it. And so now we're going to select that again. We'll go back to item tools. Now we have the move commands. And the way that works is just a grip. So it's not, it's not the best. You, you don't have the ability to of move from a, a base point to another, another point. You don't have the ability to snap to things. Um, if you do need to, it, it auto positions this, it's called a gizmo, what we're looking at here that with, the, with the arrows. If you need to position that, hold down control, grab the circle, the hand icon should appear, and you can now move that, that gizmo over there. And that is useful if you have a um, large site plan and you're moving something that's spanning, you know, let's just say, a couple of football fields. Um, sometimes that gizmo will be way off in the distance, and you really need it, um, you know, on the far side or whatever it is. So that, that's why you reposition the gizmo. Um, I don't really use. You can see here that we actually have like this these, these planes on this. I don't really use those. Um, I think that it's just another way of yeah move of moving. I I really just use the arrows. Um, we also have the ability to rotate, and so for that, if you need to rotate, typically I just get above it. And you, you actually do grab the, the shaded portion here and rotate just like that. If we grab the arrows, I think it just moves the rotation point is all it's going to do for us there. Yeah. So the center of our gizmo there is the where we're going to be rotating from. All right. And um, so there's a little bit of that. Um, those are going to be the most useful commands for you. Um, this should be about everything. Uh, we, we can change the way we can do um, sectioning here. So if you need to do sectioning um, right now, I've so I'll actually just go back. Um, we are in view, viewpoint, enable sectioning. And um, you can change your plane by um, doing, you select plane, you can do either a plane or a box. And then we can do top, bottom, front, right, back. And essentially, 
Um, if I hit move here, I should, yeah, I should get my gizmo. Now, if I come back over here and I do box, I should get it like that. I'm going to go back to plane here. I've got to go in a second here for a meeting, but um, if I need to do like the top here, I select that and you can see how that, how that happens um, and, and what it did. Um, not positive on fit selection, um, but at least, and then lastly, if you need to do, um, if you need to save a viewpoint, so let's actually turn off enable sectioning. Um, it's best to always turn off sectioning because if somebody tries to reference this in as a coordination model, the sectioning that's enabled will, will mix, mess up that coordination model. Um, if we do need to save a viewpoint, so let's say that we've um, zoomed in all the way down here and you know I, I have a meeting with my client later and I want to be able to snap just to this real quick and easy, you can just come over here to save uh, viewpoint and name it and you can see that it's opened up the save viewpoints um, property box over there for us so we'll just call this test and um, uh, so now that's in there so now if i you know pan away and I, I just click that you can see that it brings me right to it something that you should be aware of though is there's a setting and i'm not going to go over it right now but there's a setting where you can adjust um, if things are un if, if let's say i have 10 10 items in my selection tree if i've hidden two of them I save a viewpoint, then I go do some other stuff, I unhide them, and I click on that again, it will revert back to what was hidden when that viewpoint was saved. Just be aware of that. Um, but this has been a um, quick overview of Navisworks and um, how you can use the interface. Uh, the item tools that we discussed earlier are only available in Manage and not in Preview.